Welcome, TCTV. We have a special edition today, our football edition. I'm Joe Kelly. And I'm Adam Mott, here with our first story. An eerie apartment complex shouting last Saturday leaves four dead and one injured. Police pictures show a teddy bear attached to a fence where two adults and two children were shot to death while a two-year-old boy was taken to a Hammett Medical Center and treated for a gunshot wound. Although the name of the adult's male has not been released, officials say the police recognize a 20-year-old mother as Jamie Manilowski and her two daughters, 7-year-old Bri Brianna and 4-year-old Trinity. Considering Manilowski was in dispute with a male adult, police are ruling this as a homicide-suicide, but say more details are to come. The sights and sounds of a foreign country could be heard Friday night on the campus of Youngstown University. It was the fourth annual African Culture Night, completed with dancing, food, and fashion. The event has put on every year by the African Student Union. The event was also a fundraiser. The money raised will be donated to the Habitat for the Humanity in Youngstown. The faces of homelessness in Shenango Valley are far from hopeless at Joshua's Haven City Mission. Almost two years after the Sharon Homeless Shelter opened, the mission has helped 158 men find jobs and get back on their feet. In fact, Joshua's Haven City Mission has turned out town men away to help the locals. Director Sherry Masato Suites says they will continue to reach out to the local homeless. Suspicious fire heavily damaged a vacant house in Greenville. A house that has been vacated for years burned early Sunday morning, filled by strong winds and blazing fire. The state police fire marshal will investigate the fire, which caused heavily damage to the house. Don't forget to mark your calendars for December 3rd for the official opening of the new Till Dome. TCTV reporters Stephen, Milo, and Sarah Summer catch up with the president to discuss the events. Hi, I'm Sarah Sumner, and I'm reporting for TCTV. And today I'm here with President Troy Van Aken, and this week the inflated dome came up, and we have a few questions about that. Now, can you explain what the dome um, is and how the activities will be in it for the sure. school year? Well, it's about a $2 million project, and it uh, obviously covers a soccer, lacrosse, and football field. So it's roughly 200 feet wide by 390 feet long, and it's uh, 66 feet high. So. A lot of activities, um, whether they be athletic activities or other activities, can take place there. Um, right now we're anticipating that the baseball and softball teams will use that in the spring as well as our, our lacrosse teams. Uh, but also general students will be able to use it for intramurals or other activities. We've even had some external groups contact us and we're going to open it up to the community so they can walk during the brutal uh, western Pennsylvania months in, in January and February in the mornings. Uh, we had an airplane group, a model airplane group, call us and know if they could rent it out to um, fly model airplanes in in the winter months. And it, it ends up that the Tevlar uh, membrane's tough enough that it can take a model airplane crashing into it. So we're pretty excited about having other groups come on campus. Can you tell us when this is going to be finished? Yeah, we're going to have a grand opening and uh, all TL students and alums and, and uh, supporters are invited to uh, Teal College and the Rizzle Schreier Dome on uh, Friday, December 3rd from 7 till 9 p.m. we're going to have our grand opening and so it'll be complete um, a couple days before that. Do you think this is going to be a good investment for Teal College? I'm, I'm just convinced of it and we've got great feedback from prospective students and as uh, you, you may be aware we had a large incoming class this year about 100 more students or a 30 percent increase uh, because of the uh, the dome and all the other activities that are taking place um, I know for next fall, right now, we have more than twice as many applications for students looking to come to Teal as we had even the year before. So I know that um, providing these types of facilities, but most importantly, the activities that will be associated with the facilities, you know, means a lot to students. And so um, it's certainly going to be worth the investment. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I just would encourage everybody to uh, come out for the grand opening. Um, we're planning on having it special. We've got um, a lot of activities planned in there there that day. I know uh, Student Life, Dean McKinney, and Barbara Blue have uh, inflatables going to be in the, the, the dome. Uh, soccer, lacrosse, uh, laser tag, other types of activities. It should be a great party. Okay, well, thank you right. for the interview today. Yep. And I'm Sarah Sumner. Back to you at the desk. In national news, last Saturday night, three University of Southern Mississippi football players were shot during a fight at a nightclub, leaving them in critical conditions. Reporters say linebackers Martez Smith, Tim Green, along with their defensive end, Dedrick Jones, were shot just after 1.30 a.m. And that although no 
arrests have been made yet, there is a possibility that the shooting g it was gang-related. The coach says that the team's thoughts and prayers are with the athletes and their families in this hopes of a speedy recovery. After a fatal crash in Utah, Toyota safety is back in the spotlight. The safety of the Toyota Camry Accelerate is being questioned. Again, after the Camry smashed into a cement wall, killing both the pasture, the Pacific Camry had three recalls in the past, but had the Stoke Accelerate recalls repaired, and this Camry was supposed to be safe. Again, the investigators of the Camry Accelerator propelled in floor match contains Zach Walters and Tony Rothley joining us now for TC Sports. <laughs> Thanks, Joe and Adam. This week in sports, and NFL, the Cleveland Browns lose in overtime to the New York Jets 26-20. The prayers have finally been answered in Buffalo as the Bills finally snap an eight-game losing streak as they defeat the Detroit Lions at home on Sunday 14-12. The Carolina Hurricanes come into town to take the Pittsburgh Penguins. Tomorrow night, face-off is at 7. Thursday night football is on tonight as the Bears and the Dolphins battle it out. Back to you at the desk. Walmart's highly awaited Black Friday ad promises hot deals on high definition TVs, Blu-ray players, laptops, and holiday gift favorites. This is because it's necessary to add the most competitive prices during the holiday shopping season. Walmart United States of America head Bill Simon said Walmart's holiday strategy will place heavy emphasis on toys and electronics. A Jewish mu museum will open in Philadelphia to tell for the first time the complete story of the Jewish experience in America, a series of special access days for museums members and founders are scheduled over the next two weeks. Before it opens to the general public on November 26th, the museum mission is to explore Jewish life in the United States of America in the highlights of civil rights themes. For the first time in Japan, a jury of civilians has sentenced a man to death, court officials said on Tuesday. Defendant Hiroki Akita was charged with corresponding with another man to kill two men in Fibonacci, China, before dismembering the, and dumping their bodies. Now, let's go over to Andrew for a look at the weather. Thanks, Joe and Adam. I'm Andrew with the weather, and as you can see, the precipitation front is moving from west to east, which will come from Indiana into Ohio and hit us t sometime today. And the highs for today in Pittsburgh, it will be 37, Butler will be 34 degrees, Meadville, which will be 37, and also in Youngstown. The lows today will be around 29 degrees in Pittsburgh, Butler will be 27 degrees, 32 in Meadville and Youngstown will be 25 degrees in the seven day forecast. As you can see, the front will actually hit us on Thursday with a chance of snow and the weekend will turn into a, a pretty decent weekend with no snow, be more sunny and become rainy on Monday again. Now back to the desk. Thanks Andrew and entertainment news. After acquiring a new level, Big Machine Records, which is the home to singers like Taylor Swift and Trisha Yearwood, the country trio Racial Flash released a brand new album this past Tuesday entitled Nothing Like This. The brand new explains that it contains a side of racial flash that fans haven't seen before. By going down a different path this time around, the band says that they are Really excited to see the reaction to the, their new album. Because of the new music it contains, the album recently hit stores this past Tuesday. So make sure you get it out and grab a copy. E! News argues that Harry Potter may actually rival the Twilight Saga. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows release coming Friday, so be sure to check it out and decide for yourselves. TCTV reporters Seth and Luke 
talk to a few TL students about the upcoming release. I'm Luke Mason here with TCTV to talk to the teacher of the FYS class, A Muggle's Guide to Making Good Choices, Mrs. Ballas. Hello. Hi. <laughs> the uh, seventh Harry Potter movie is coming out on Friday. How excited are you? I'm so excited. I'm actually going at midnight to go see it. Oh, that's all. Me and my friends are too. It's a, how many, bo what books have you read of the Harry Potter? I I've read all of the books, um, all seven, including um, the extra books. So like the Beetle, the Bard, I've read that. I've read, um, she did a couple of, of short little um, books, the Quidditch book, and it was also the, um, the magical creatures textbooks that she did for a, a comic relief benefit. So I've, I've read those two multiple times. <laughs> That's cool. And uh, you've been to the Harry Potter in Disneyland. Yes, yes. I, I was at Universal in June and I got to go to the Harry Potter park and I actually have my Harry Potter candy right next to you. And um, I got a wand and a scarf and it was, it was just wicked cool. <laughs> The, the seventh Harry Potter movie is being split into two parts. Is that a good thing, do you think? I am really excited about that because it means they're probably not going to cut anything. Um, and I don't like it when they cut parts from the book for the movie. So I'm really excited. I, I, I don't want to have to wait until July to see the rest of it. But I'm really excited that they're not going to be you know, cutting characters and, and events out of the book because it's just too important to, yeah. to let it not be in the movie. So I, I can't wait. <laughs> Me neither. Okay. This is uh, Luke Mason at TCTV. Thank you. Hey, Bryn's Prince William is engaged to Katie Middleton and has given her the engagement ring his late mother, Diane, wore. The prince said that both the ring and Katie are special to me. The royal wedding is planned for the spring of summer of 2011. Wow, if I was Katie Middleton, I wouldn't marry no prince. That Brian Davis kid on campus, he has a lot to offer from what I hear. <laughs> right. Well, that's all the time we have today. Thanks for tuning in to TCTV. See you soon.